to that end, ladies and gentlemen, um, a very good morning to all of you. Where we're trying to connect with our man in England, Mr. Andre Ebanks, because I thought it was a very important subject matter um, he has created in, um, in that aspect, a welcome pack for Caymanians and people that are in uh, overseas. As you, if you don't know, Mr. Ebanks is the Cayman's representative to the UK and to the EU as well. He takes care of all the issues and student problems and um, those that are there, if you need any problem, if you need any help, if you have lost your passport, if you need any kind of assistance whatsoever, his office is there to help you. Um, and he was crucial, absolutely crucial in getting Caymanians back during the lockdown pandemic as well. Uh, and so I, he's, to me, one of the most valuable people in the Cayman Islands. And I just don't say that lightly. I think he's a great man, good gentleman as well. And hopefully we'll hear from him as um, very shortly. Maybe he'll call in two three three one zero one nine. But you can actually participate as well. Um, you can participate by contacting us through the various different using um, areas. He's and hopefully this is him. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Ebanks, very good morning to you, my dear friend. I was hoping to see you. you? I, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right now that I hear your voice. Um, I, I always, you know, I always appreciate you and your smile, but I was hoping to have you on Zoom that I can actually see the whole of you. Um, but I, I, got, I, got, I got this even better part, and I'm glad to see that you came on accent not gone away yet. Um, so <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> How is my dear friend doing? Good morning to you and good morning, K-Man. Greetings from hot and sunny London. <laughs> I love your sense of humor. Um, you know, Andre, tell us all about you and about that office there. For those that do not know whom you are, which they should, um, and, and what your office does for all of them. I, I, was, I was saying earlier before you logged on, um, you know, you have been very crucial in getting a lot of our students back during the, the lockdown, the pandemic as well, um, help coordinating some of those air bridges that happened. And I got to say thank you for your staff for, for going out into the into the elements. And there's a picture that I know that, that you posted with you guys in, in Heathrow. And it's probably the least people I've ever seen in Heathrow in my whole entire life. It's just like you and Charles. Just, uh, <laughs> like, like, like Two people in Heathrow. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so, but you were there to try to make sure that Kim Anions got home safe and so forth. So, thank you. Yeah, absolute pleasure. And the photo that you referred to was very early on. That was when the borders were first closing in March. And that's part of the reason to your point why it was so empty. So, yeah. we just thought, look, it's in a certain time. It was one of the last flights before, the, the last commercial flight before borders closed at home and came out. And we just thought that could be a, a point of, an easy point of confusion. So let me as well just be there and go on the spot. So it was myself, Deputy Representative Charles Parchman, and Kate Candida took the photo. So she was also there from Came Out Connection UK. You know, talk to us about, you know, your office, what you do, um, and what you're there for and then maybe get into your new digital welcome pack, because I think it's pretty cool. I think what you guys have done with your Zoom calls, with um, meeting, reaching out to the student body that we have there, the diaspora that's you know spread not only in England, but in, in various different parts of the EU. Um, I just, I, I got to say thank you very much for putting in the effort to make sure that people feel that they're protected, that there's somebody that has their, their back, so to speak. Absolutely. And I'll apologize to you and your audience in advance. Because of our technical the, the technical Zoom difficulty, I'm calling you from the office's app, which is the main line that picks up the phone. Uh -huh. So if there's a slight disruption, there might be someone actually trying to call the office, and I'll have to direct them to another officer. All right. You, you'll be the receptionist this morning. Okay. <laughs> Happy to do jack of all trades. Uh, so, yes, in a nutshell, the office is essentially the extension of the Cayman government in Cayman government in the UK and an extension onto liaison with the UK government 
to be that facilitator, that bridge that Caymanians and Cayman residents can go to for information, support, and assistance. And although, as you know, when I originally was appointed to, to the role back and officially started September 2019, but never, of course, just like everybody else in the world, imagine it'd be something called COVID-19. Yep. But I do think it served as an example, whether I was a representative or not, as to the, the value that the office has by being that bridge and support unit, because I, I can only imagine what it was like at home, but in, in the UK, it was, March was a, was, a, was a pretty unsettling time, and quick decisions had to be made, quick changes in terms of regulations and protocols and procedures were needed, so we just had to step in and act, and I think this was probably indicative of the, of the entire civil service and, and members of the private sector that folks were working outside of their normal roles. But you did what you had to do to help folks to try to get home who wanted or needed to get home in the best and most comfortable fashion possible. You know, um, I, I want to thank you for that. Lisa, whom is in the, in, in the UK, um, Lisa says, yes, thank you, Mr. Andre. And, you know, there's, there's other students that are, that are tuned in and listening as well. Uh, now that you establish all of what you all do, you, you've now created a kind of a, you know, a digital welcome pack for Caymanians that, and Cayman residents that are coming into the UK as well. And, and I want you to kind of elaborate a little bit more on that, what that means for them, because there's a lot of students that will be heading off to university. There may be a lot of parents that are a little petrified of sending their children off probably for the first time in, in a Zoom that is, has COVID. Um, you know, SARS is, is pretty, I, I wouldn't want to run rampant, but, um, you know, SARS is, is pretty much present in the UK at the moment. And, you know, as a parent, you're always concerned, like, well, I'm always somewhat, 10 feet away from my child, so to speak, in the Cayman Islands. If he or she is sick, you know, I can help them, but I'm sending him off to a jurisdiction that is, is probably, you know, heightened in terms of COVID. And you've created this pact to try to mitigate that risk and that fear for all of those. And, and, and I thought it was a great thing, and I wanted to highlight all the wonderful works that you and your staff is doing out there and making Caymanians know that you are there for them. Thank you for that. What, what it, maybe it, it would help to explain how it came about. Okay. So our staff, and I'll, and I'll take a very quick moment here to give a shout out to, to the team, Deputy, Park, Deputy Representative Charles Parchman, Assistant Representative Philip Knight, Assistant Representative Dennis Miller, Business Manager Rahat Siddiqui, and also recently joined Melanie Ebanks as an Administrative Assistant. And also, we were supportive when the PAC first came about by, again, Kit Kandaya from Cayman Connection, our, our affiliate. So we sat around maybe top of June, and we were thinking about the students that were returning because we finally taken a breath, and that was after one of the, the May Air Bridges, where pretty much most of the students and young professionals that, that needed or wanted to go home by that point had made it. Most of the coursework was, was done around end of May or top of June. And we thought, okay, well, let's think ahead, because there are presumably all, if not a majority, will return. And what what can we do? Because ordinarily, if, if there wasn't any COVID, then all of these students would be coming back on their own through commercial, through commercial flights, all the different points and all the different times. But in this case, because of travel restrictions, they're all going to return by one or two or three air bridges from Cayman to, to the UK. So what can we do since they'll all be amassed on, on these flights? And what will people like? So then we just began to think about some ideas and say, you know what? If, if we could be helpful in some way, and then there may be others, but what we thought about, if we could be helpful in some way, it would be there's a whole lot of information and shifting conditions when it comes to COVID. We are now deep into the digital information age. In fact, you can maybe make the argument that there's almost too much information. So rather than have folks do 
all the hunting and gathering themselves. Why don't we try to compile? We have the most, as far as we can see, accurate government links to relevant information and put it all together. And I know from recent experience of having moved our, our entire family in August to, to take this role, you're basically coming over with almost your entire life of your, your valuable possessions. The last thing that you would need is to carry around another set of bulky documents. And we probably thought if, if we did a survey in the paper form, then we asked the aid, we, we would imagine that some of the papers might have been left on the plane. Hmm. So we just thought digital age, environmentally conscious of paper, let's put everything as much as we can in the palm of people's hands. And we, if I take you through the welcome pack pretty quickly, it's on, our, it's on our website. There's a dedicated section of the page to it, and it just has certain things of coming to the UK, what, what life is like with, with COVID, frequently asked questions when it comes to COVID. And even if there was no COVID, we thought of frequently asked questions about moving to the UK in any event. And then some tips and tricks that we've all learned along the way, little things that you could forget, like an adapter for your electronics, the, the plugins are different here, something that... Someone who's the first time that they get caught out if you hadn't actually been told about it, you have to then scramble to see how you're going to plug in your devices. So little tips and tricks on how you can order food and find things online. And then more importantly, as part of a, a wider objective of the office, is to build that sense of Cayman community in the UK and the EU and where we have links to Cayman Connection so that we can have, particularly with COVID, a virtual community, a, a home from, away from home online. Excellent. You know, I'm on your site right now, and for those that are listening, you can actually follow through uh, what, what Mr. Andrea Banks is, is talking about. It's C-I-G-O-U-K, like uh, C-I-G office, or U-K dot K-Y. That is C-I-G-O-U-K dot K-Y. Log on. It's actually pretty very, um, it's very clear. It's well laid out. All of the details are there that you want to to click on to and find out more about the details and the campaigns and so forth that they're doing. Welcome um, to the UK, all the various different things. you got your visas, your passport, your contact information, um, news and everything that may be pertinent to all of you, and you can um, click on all of those various different aspects of it. You know, Andre, when, when i, I got to say this is one reason why I said the government finally made one great decision. <laughs> I'm on record saying it. I know you probably you're probably like, what is this? Stop it! But um, your know, your forward thinking way of trying to to look at issues and resolving them without any kind of cumbersome kind of issues, I'm I'm very confident is a welcome to a lot of parents and children that may be going off, uh, going back or going there for the very first time. When when they get to you, how can they? Um, continue, you know, being a part of that Cayman community, what would you recommend to all of them that are there to to, to maintain? Because I, I know you guys have done some Zoom meetings and so forth of with some of the diaspora, some of the students that are there um, to try to to answer some questions that they may have had. You're, you're very digitally connected. Um, I just, for parents out there that are listening right now, I have a father, um, a, a great friend of mine, that his son is is about to head off to the UK, and I know he himself is um, is a little anxious as well because obviously he loves his one son, um, and that is that is his pride and joy. And COVID and SARS and so forth is always an issue, um, you know, with these things and these concerns. What would you say to parents like that right now, and maybe young men and young ladies that are leaving for the very first time? Excellent question. I'll, I'll, I'll address it this way. I know, I know you're, you're teasing about government decision making, but I must say, from an outside with looking you, in, with this you, is with you, what, with you. This is part of what brought, brought the welcome back about, is because the, the, the government has made extraordinary decisions, to, extraordinarily good decisions, to keep the public safe from COVID, and Cayman is essentially a COVID-safe bubble, which is extraordinary when you think about it. Yeah. And that was one of the things that was on the team's mind when we were thinking about the welcome back, is that at the moment, although the UK is not like some other places that are going through some tough times right now, 
it's still much more active and far more prevalent COVID is than, than came in. So part of what was on my mind was I mean, those of the staff and the team and CCUK was those type of parents with those questions. And me now, as you know, as a, a young parent now of six years, kind of changes your perspective to think, all right, so if you're that first time or even a returner, and even if you're not a student and you're a young professional, and you're also that parent that's going to drop your student off and to, to return, I would say that from my experience, we have put out the information for you to be able to find it, but on a personal note, I find that with proper precaution, I have found that you can establish a relatively manageable life even with COVID. Because in the example you, you just gave, Woody, that is someone who's making a decision in their family that they need to go to the UK or Europe. So these are folks, by and large, who are coming here to go on holiday. They need to go. So what could we provide to them in that necessity to, to help guide them in carving out a relatively, a relatively safe and manageable life with COVID? And so that's part of the reason why we put forward our coming to the UK life with COVID tab. And a lot of it really comes down to just, just being prudent. If so for, for my family and I, we avoid crowds. You go out less frequently. One of the things that I think from what I'm reading is picking up and came out is online delivery. That, uh, that here is at a tremendous help that groceries come straight to the door. So you limit your, your exposure to outside. If you do go outside, there, there are large, this is another great thing about the UK, there are large green open spaces where you can get exercise and use safely distance. And I must say, a, a lot of the activities, even uh, for those who might be coming, because this, this extends beyond students, those who, if they're moving with a family, I find that a lot of activities are, are, are safe, are, are being practiced safely. So, for example, my, my son still goes to football practice. They're not in any way doing sort of contact sports. But they're mainly doing drills that are socially distanced and he's having exercises. But I find in, in a number of ways people are taking this seriously. And, in fact, as someone who just moved there, started a job in September of last year, but moved here in August, COVID has had some blessings from silver lining. Mm. There are certain places now that my hard look around are actually safer now from a health and safety standard than they were when I first arrived uh, in September, uh, August 2019. For, as a small example, the local gym that I'm signed up to, my local gym at home was Kings, and I, and I was used to the antiseptic spray bottles being by every machine and wiping it down after you work out. The local gym that I signed up to here just didn't, just didn't have that. You fast forward now where you can now pre, um, frequent gyms again in the UK as of, I think, the 25th of, of last month. And my same gym is completely before social distance between machines. They now have spray bottles. And, and, and wipes to wipe down each of the machines after the uses. So a few places now, I, I actually think, have been made safer and have become more health conscious than they were before COVID. Excellent. You know, I, I've been getting some reports in the last couple of, uh, I would say the last week, uh, some Comanians, um, they were saying that Heathrow uh, was, was being shut down again and there's a possibility of, of another lockdown that will be coming in the UK or certain sections of the UK. Is that is that true? I certainly haven't had any briefing that Heathrow is shutting down. But we, we have seen where there are portions of the UK that have had spikes and have gone back into the lockdown. So in Scotland, the most recent one was Aberdeen. Right. But a week or so ago, Manchester, Lancaster area, uh, there was a bit of a spike and there was a lockdown. But I haven't... I haven't been briefed on a full UK lockdown or certainly that, that he saw with lockdown. They did add a few more countries to the quarantine list. So Bahamas, so right now, your listeners may know, if you're traveling directly from Cayman on the air bridge to the UK, you don't have to quarantine in the UK when you get here. We're, 
we're not on the quarantine travel list, but it was recently updated as late as last night, and I think Bahamas, Belgium, and a couple of others have been added to the list. Excellent. Well, that's 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 excellent to know, uh, because I mean that's another another issue that people would have to look on their agenda and figure out what they're going to do if you're quarantined for at least you know 14 days, a fortnight. Um, now Kim Ann is on, on that list that you really don't need to do that. Have you been aware of, of specific schools and so forth? I know you do your best to try and keep in touch with our wonderful student body that we have there. Um, and some of them go to specific institutions. Has there been any kind of scheduling changes and so forth with those institutions that, um, that they would, you think people might want to know or, how they're going to attend classes? Is it going to be staggered? Is it going to be less classes? Um, do you know how some of those things may work? No, I, it, it'll come down to each institution, and I'm sure there'll be advising the students, as it'll also depend on the area that the, that the university is in. But from what's been public, publicly disseminated, I, I think schools, as far as the universities, are taking it quite seriously and implementing social distancing measures. Okay, uh, we we got a we got a text from a from a, a father, and just wants to say that he's so glad that you're there. Um, you work very very hard, and it's a real value uh, for us as a country to have you there as well. Uh, great value for money. So just I just want to let you know that's not you know I would say that to you normally, but that's somebody else. So I I can't I can't credit myself for that one this morning, Andre. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but uh, go so, on. So, so thank you, for, thank you for the comment. And it's it, it really is a team effort. Uh, we 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 could we as a team here also couldn't do it without it without the support of our, our ministry and other support staff from the deputy governor on down here in Cayman. You know, talk to us. Talk to us about you know the air bridges and so forth that you may see happening. Um, very shortly, because there's locally here as well, um, where, where, you know, social media is, is, is sometimes can be a double-edged sword. It You can have a lot of bovine scatology that's being sent to you that is not necessarily factual, but it's just being spread. Um, you know, for example, one that was spreading around yesterday that Cayman Airport is going to be shut down um, to the end of November now, and and that may affect some air bridges and so forth that is going out and only repatriation flights but it won't be a repatriation flight if her students are leaving for school whether it's in the u.s or the uk and i know i don't want to digress and go to the u.s but with you um going in the uk have you heard anything of of that nature that maybe flights may be restricted and so forth um coming in from us or is it cool i know you just said that we have been approved that we are we don't have the quarantine, which is a great thing for compared to other nations, which is on a kind of almost a no-fly zone. Or if you are, you're going to have to quarantine. Kim and doesn't isn't subjected to that. Have you heard any any issues of any kind of interruption in terms of that air bridge? Sure, good question. Let me try to unpack it in, in two in the two different directions of travel. So, my last briefing is that the government is is working hard on examining the whole phase opening of the border. And they are extremely conscious that there are, from the direction of Cayman to London, students, some have already left on the air bridge that was on the 28th of July, so just a few days ago. And that there are, there's another round that will need to leave at the end of August. So the government is extremely conscious of that and working hard to ensure that that remains. So I haven't heard, at least my last briefing, heard that there was anything to disrupt that. What I think some folks are waiting for, which is a, a good question, is what the policies and procedures will be to return the other direction of travel yep. in September. So say a parent has left on the 28th of August on the BA Airbridge to London, and now needs to have, have securely left I say child, but these, these, are, these, are grown, these are grown, these are grown students. I was securely left the student in the UK and now seeks to return to Cayman. I think that is the part that I believe, and what I've seen, is not going to be disrupted. 
but the government is just working on the how to bring the person back. Will it be, will it still be 14 day government arranged isolation or will it, will it move as said in a press conference three or four weeks ago to self isolation for five days, that there'll be some new technology. So I think, while the government is working on the how of the phase opening, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a question that there, that there will be a way to get back. I think what's being worked on is, is the how and to show up the protocols. All right, I'm glad to hear that. You know, Andrew, when, we're, when, I, when I'm looking at, at the UK and so forth of, of that nature, how many, how many students that we have, um, in your opinion, right over there right now and... and and I just want the parents that are maybe listening right then now know that you're doing your best to try to make sure that each and every one of them are, are aware of your office and your office presence, that there, if there's an issue that they may have in any capacity, that you all are there to try to help them uh, in their very best. You know, we, we've had Caymanians that um, have gone overseas and lost passports and so forth of that nature. Um, you know, sometimes when you're young and this is the first time out of the nest, so to speak, you can kind of lose your head and don't think of certain documents because mom always held them, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> and I want to make sure that if something happens, both the parent and the, and the student know that, that this respite, this, this uh, solace is there waiting for them. How many students do we okay. have? How many students okay. do we have up there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, there's a couple of elements in that question that I think are appropriate to touch on. So number one, in terms of contact of the office, go directly to CIGOUK.KY. You can, you can find our, our details and our contact details to sign up to our newsletter. It's on the welcome pack. That will then put you on, essentially, you're on the radar of, of the office, and then we'll get our media blast. Because one of the things that we are, preparing for, even though nobody hopes for it, is if there is a, a stronger spike in the auto in the UK, we don't want to have to, we're, we're, we're aiming not to be in the position that we were back in March, where we were now trying to get a handle on the students, and it goes beyond the students in the UK. One of the things that the pandemic taught us is just how large, a lot of focus goes on, on students, and quite rightly, but the, how large the, the diaspora here is in Cayman. You have young Caymanians, you have Caymanians who are more pension age and have determined that they would like to, to live in the UK. You have those just experimenting with, with their life and want to do different things. You have those that are not just in the UK, but also in in Europe. You have Caymanians who came through the air bridge who are, who are studying in far flung places as Thailand and Japan. Right. So it's a huge network that COVID taught us. And having folks streamline and signed up to our newsletter and get our blast, that was one of the things that we were worried about back in March, was everybody hearing us. So I would invite anyone who's coming over who hasn't signed up yet to go to our welcome pack, go to CIGOUK.KY, sign up to our newsletter. It, it also taught us, in terms of your question of the numbers, that quite easily, if you look, if you look at the flights that are leaving, that have 200 plus capacity, so one just left, on the 28th of July, another one will go, and it'll probably be one or two in September, Lord willing. It was in easily in the range of, of hundreds of students. And then on top of that, if you add young professionals and folks who may be slightly older and decide to move, or no less Cayman, you know, Cayman resident, have a link to Cayman, that need updated information, um, should that be the case. And you're right, you're right, Woody, that odd things happen. It, it, until uh, a pandemic happens, some folks didn't necessarily were aware that their passport expired. Yeah. So we can help, can we can help and react quickly. And there's a there's a few there's a few ministries and departments to shout out at this time. Border control has been absolutely fantastic through the, the pandemic in terms of there's a lost passport or an expired passport. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office of the UK, same thing in the Governor's Office. The Ministry of Education is hugely helpful in terms of tracking now numbers of students, at least those that we know of on, on the government scholarship student side, which has already the list of names of students who are at least getting the government scholarship. 
So another important point to make is that if you're an officer, if you're having a student that's either self-funded, privately funded, or has a private sector scholarship, please do register. Because as far as I can see, that list of names is not packaged very neatly anywhere. So we want to try to encourage as many people as possible for hopefully we never have to use it for safety reasons. Hopefully our, our messages have to do with socializing and interacting virtually. But in the event that there was some sort of serious second spike, it's good to know that we can click a button and get information out to folks. Agreed. Agreed. You know, even even with, um, for example, them contacting you and you can, um, you know, send your new newsletter out, but you all are very digitally inclined as well, so you can even create Zoom meetings um, and send out invitations to those kind of discussions that you may have if something does pop up so that they can feel a little bit more engaged as well um, than just having a text message or even a, a newsletter that, that came up, you know, electronically, because you're doing... I gotta say this, and I, and and we did post it on our on our Facebook page, Kim and Crosstalk Facebook page, how you guys were working with the Kim and Connection um, and just creating this digital kind of a community that you can ask for questions. Um, everybody that may have a heightened concern or just need to know where to go or what to do or whom to see, uh, you you all created that, and and I can tell you from several different responses that we received from parents. They were so grateful because they're children. Um, obviously, during this, this was an unprecedented time and a pandemic that no one has witnessed since 1918, um, really, with the what the Spanish flu. So no one really walked through this kind of environment. And parents were were on pins and needles. And when you created these kind of environments and these these avenues for them to vent or talk or to just be a part of the community. I got the feedback that many parents were so grateful because their children then, their anxiety was lessened. They were informed. They knew where to go, what to do. And so they they can navigate this uncharted territory a lot easier. And I got to say to you and your whole entire staff, honestly, I said it on air without you there but when, when we posted it. But I want to say to you, uh, Mr. Ebanks, I'm so very proud of you, for so very thankful for you uh, and your whole entire staff for doing that because you you all done a, a stellar job. And as the poster said this morning, great value for money having you there, sir. Well, well thank you for those kind words. But the, the truth of the matter is, my family and I, my, my wife, two children, our Caymanians still live in, in the UK. So we also do want to connect with Caymanians here because you, you, miss, you miss home. I mean, I, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm very grateful for my government job, but I, I, I miss home. I, I, we, we, get, we get homesick from time to time. And due to this COVID experience, what we found out is that there were Caymanians who were in the same city in the UK who didn't realize each other was there. Until, and then we connected certain folks through the pandemic with my pack and and come down on the train together from, say, Leeds or Birmingham to catch the air break. And they go, wow, I didn't even know so-and-so was up here. So it was great to be able to connect those dots and how it came out, particularly uh, those in, in, the, in the wider parts of, of the U.K. It, it, it's just a good feeling. So the, one of the silver linings, and I think, I think we could all acknowledge that COVID would be a completely different pandemic without the Internet. Yeah. Thank goodness for the Internet that we were able to survive virtually and, and take the upside of it and say, well, since we already all have to be online to, to survive, either working from home or studying from home, let's try to, as much as we can, connect digitally and create a, a, a sense of community. So we want to do some things, particularly in the autumn, looking forward, of more exercises in terms of we, we, we started during COVID because we thought it would help those who were because we had in mind those who left on air bridges, but there were those for very valid, rational reasons decided to stay in the UK because it was in their best interest when they weighed everything up the time to ensure that there were folks who were still living at home deep into the, the UK lockdown wasn't restricted, was restricted from movement, very little movement, but let's get folks online and share. And there were some powerful conversations. We called them virtual yard meetings within around April and May where we were still locked down. And it was just great to be able to see or witness folks vent and share and not feel as anxious. So I, we do hope and pray that 
we, we don't see those days again, but at least the facilities are in place that if we have to enact it, that, that they're there because it also, COVID also played a mind, played a role not just on you physically, but also mentally. Different from me, I'm here with, with my family and two, and two kids, so I have immediate social contact. But you also have to think about the folks who are living by themselves. Maybe in a flat, didn't have their own yard where they could walk around and you're essentially trapped in a, a four by four room. You also have to think of folks' mental health. This played a, a major role in some of the things that were initiatives that we were thinking. You know, in, in, in terms of, for example, some of those. Um, not just students now, but the, as you said, some pensioners that have decided to, to move there. How have they, have they embraced the digital format that you're trying to reach out to individuals to make certain that they are a part of the group? Because I thought it was pretty cool when I saw your, your kind of a virtual yard meeting. And like I said, I, I was so impressed with that. But I'm just wondering, are, are some of the seniors, the pensioners, that you may know of, um, do we have a proper, I guess it was a listing um, of all of them as well, so that they're included into the whole entire bundle in case that there is a spike coming up in the autumn, as as you pointed out, SARS is, is very similar to the influenza, and it, it has a cycle, uh, sadly and unfortunately, and usually when you see it's colder, they're saying that it may have a spike, so we'll probably see that coming up in autumn, Usually that happens when schools open and so forth as well with influenza, and you never know what's going to happen in, in the winter months. So just to be prepared during that time, have we um, gathered them into the fold, and how is that looking? Well, that was one of the interesting things about um, the air bridge exercises, and why I alluded to earlier that it, we're, as, as, as much as we care for and quite rightly think about our students, that there is a, a wider community. And by coming forward, we were able to identify those at senior age who either went back on one of the air bridges or have left, and we have them noted in, in case they return, and we also have notes on those who decided to stay. And I wouldn't have imagined or wouldn't have, have thought that, I, will, I won't call any names publicly, but I have a really, really good friend of mine, and when my family and I visited came out in February, in February 2019, very briefly for, for a week, I saw him down at Caymana Bay, and he, was, he, he hugged me, and he wished me well to come back, and he didn't tell me until the pandemic struck that his brother was, is actually here. Um, and I, I have her on WhatsApp now, and I, I checked on it um, during the height of the pandemic, but it was just an example that we were going to strive extremely hard to ensure that we connect the dots of the, the Caymanians who are here. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that, my friend. What is on the horizon for you in your office? What is on the drawing table at the moment that, that you can maybe give us a sneak peek at? Is obviously the, the school season is going to be starting. The, the borders may be opening. There's London or the England is looking very promising to have a possible either therapeutics or a somewhat a vaccine for COVID. What, what is happening with you guys, what's on the drawing table? So the first focus is one thing which came over, as I said, 31st of July. We're thinking about and, and raising our hands and helping the government as much as we can to lean on us for the next flight that's going to leave, scheduled to leave the 28th of August and helping in any way possible that we can of how a, a parent or anyone else who's in the UK will return post 1 September. So that's the primary focus. And, I, and I'm, I'm hopeful from briefings that I've received that there'll be some greater light shed on that in, in, the, in the upcoming working day. So that's number one. Number two is then thinking about not only COVID, but we're thinking of it in sort of two dimensions. One, let's just say, that, fingers crossed, touch wood, Lord willing, there isn't some serious, very, very serious second second wave or, or spike in the overall throughout the entire UK. The, the work of our office ordinarily, quote-unquote, our day jobs, has to continue where we promote 
activities for Caymanian. We engage in public affairs. We assist the government with initiatives that, are, that we're hearing that are coming down, down the pike from the UK. So there's that stream of work. And then the other stream of work is what we're trying to build in the background, that in the event that there's an unfortunate strong second spike, that we have put out as much information as possible. Folks know where to get us. We are completely in sync in line with not just UK Border Force, but CBC, so Cayman, Border Control, Customs and Border Control, and all the other apparatus that will form part of the reopening or opening phases, that if something were to happen, that apparatus is strong and clear in case folks needed to come back. So it's total on two levels, thinking about our, what would normally be our usual routine if there was no COVID, and then thinking about what happens if there is a, an unfortunate second wave. All right. Well, you know, sir, I just, the one, one last time I want you to give your UK, um, your, your side out that everybody that is listening right now should have as a save favorite or uh, a bookmark on that's going overseas, that if they have a loved one overseas, a parent and themselves are, are leaving, their children are going, they should make sure that this is part of their, their whole entire toolkit, so to speak. I want you to give them the Cayman Islands. Um, government office in the UK, their contact details, as, as again, your your webpage, because on that you can actually email you. You actually got a number on there that they can call you as well if, if they want to physically call you. As you're saying, you're manning that front desk telephone now. Um, so they can call that number. I'll probably give that out for you as well. But um, if you can give them your, your web address and how to navigate it, it's quite easy to navigate. It's very clean. It's very um, straightforward. They got various different things there, home, about, news, annual briefing, campaigns, visa and passports, contact. Right at the very top, there's some videos as well that um, we've played on this show that you've done. Um, and there's uh, some press and Kim and Island's information as well. So all of those things are there for, for everyone. Just scroll down the page. You're bound to find something that you need or could help you if you're in the U.K. or, as you said, Andre, not just in the U.K., but in Europe. And as far as Thailand and and in Asia, really, that will probably need to utilize your services whilst you're there. Sure. Now I'm not sure I can do it the same justice as you would, buddy. Do you still do the subway eat fresh routine? <laughs> I do. You want to help me with that one? <laughs> I, if you help me, if you help me with that, I help you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure I can properly replicate that. All the list they can go to CIGOUK.KY. You'll get to the home page, middle of the page. There's a welcome message for me. There's a welcome pack. You can click on the link. You can also go to the contact page. And our, our number is plus four four two zero seven four nine one seventy seven seventy two. Or you can email info dot CIGO at gov.ky. And the at gov.ky reminds me, I, I, I've given several shout outs to the team. Our ministry, Ministry of Education and Border Control, but but through this, some, some real unsung heroes have been the Computer Services Department of, of Government. They have been completely responsive, and we would essentially and physically and technologically be cut off without them. So a couple of officers in particular look after us: Joe Ryan Garcia and Corey Christian. So thank thank you, Computer Services. You, you keep the lights on for us. No, that's excellent, man. Uh, I love that. I miss you, brother. I really do. And, I, and um, you know, any last kind of closing statements? Because I know you got a, you're a busy man. Um, it's winding the day down there as well. But you you never stop. I can guarantee you that you never stop. You're on 24-7 um, for, for everyone that's there. You've always been. But um, is there any kind of closing statement that you would like or wonderful? My, I think I have the greatest audience in the world, um, Andre. I want, I want them to know as much as possible and, and be informed. I, I really cannot believe. You remember we were saying our farewell. There's been you realize it's been over a year already when we went to Canton, and you were wishing me farewell. Yes, and, and I, I, just, I just cannot believe a year has gone by. So I shout out to you and your and your family and Shirley. I hope you all are well. We do need to do this more often. In fact, our office was thinking about yourself, Radio Cayman, and a few other outlets just prior to COVID to say it'd be good to come on and give some updates from, from the UK. 
standpoint. So let's keep this going. Let's not make this about the pandemic. But in terms of a message to the listening audience, I would just say it, it, it there's, there, there are no words. I mean, no one could have described or even envisioned something like COVID. It still feels so surreal. But I, I do feel that with, with prayer and prudence and keeping in contact and, and loving and thinking of each other, we can get through this. And what COVID has certainly taught me is that in terms of whether not just speaking on behalf of Cayman, but the other overseas territories that have representative offices, we technically aren't accorded with the title of, of embassy because that's reserved quite rightly for independent, completely independent states under, under the UN who would have that sort of title. But at the end of the day, not to speak of for myself again, but all the other overseas territories, from Little BVI, TCI, and others, that's pretty much what these representative offices are. It's an embassy-like function. We are we are here for you. If we don't have the answer, then we'll knock on the doors of either the UK or Cayman to try to, to get you the answer as quickly as possible. So do not hesitate and think in any shape or fashion that you would in any way be a bother. Reach out, feel free. We are, it, it gives me greater and the team greater job satisfaction to know that we, we've helped you than for you to for you to decide, you know what, I don't want to call, maybe I won't get through, or maybe they won't have the answer. It gives us no greater satisfaction, and, I, and most of the team will agree. Some of those airbrush fights and some of the stories that I could tell you in other... Oh, no. Don't tell me the embassy ran out of credit. <laughs> uh, um, we, we unfortunately lost uh, Mr. Ebanks. Hopefully we'll reconnect again. Um, in the meantime, what I'm just simply going to do is just take a little commercial break. And if he does come back on, we'll do that. If not, um, we'll just do our normal closing. But um, hopefully we get reconnected and he can finish off his closing and so forth. But to all of you, thank you very much for tuning in. Keep tuned. Mr. Ebanks.